Eh, muchas gracias por estar participando. Estamos esperando pues, que llegue más gente. Hubo algunos pequeños cambios de última hora. Los cambios se están tomando, pero afortunadamente lo importante es que están ustedes y que están, por supuesto, los candidatos. Yo quiero presentar, antes, eh, primero que todo, pues darle el agradecimiento a Jesús Ministri, a la señora Maudre Valéndez por darnos esta oportunidad, la oportunidad de traer a los candidatos a hablar con la comunidad hispana. Uno de los candidatos eh, para la alcaldía, ya dentro de poco, dentro de muy poco vamos a estar nosotros teniendo la oportunidad de votar, uno de estos candidatos es el eh, señor, por el Partido Republicano, el señor Edwin Peco, que fue concejal de la ciudad de Reina, que una persona, es una persona que tiene grandes cualidades políticas, ha tenido eh, gran experiencia en la ciudad. Este señor sirvió a la ciudad desde el año 2007 al año 2011. En el año 2012 corrió eh, por el distrito, el noveno distrito congresional, pues con unos resultados poco favorables para él. Quiero de paso pues también, eh, Maudi, ¿quiere usted presentar al señor Patricano o seguimos aquí con la introducción? Algo más también, el señor eh, Edwin Pico, republicano, que vemos eh, muy joven, tiene 43 años de edad, tiene una familia muy bonita, que están todos radicados aquí en la ciudad de Charlo, ha sido una persona comerciante, ahora pues también ha tomado las líderes políticas. El señor Patrick Cano, un hombre de 47 años, con más de 20 años de experiencia política en la ciudad de Charlo, de una trayectoria política supremamente larga en el año 1993, ganó un puesto en el Consejo de la Ciudad Reina, siendo el más joven en haber logrado este cargo. Gana tres elecciones más en forma consecutiva, luego de retirarse pues, a la vida pública, luego de iniciando casi que en la década del 2000. En el 2001 regresa a petición de sus seguidores y ha sido el alcalde del medio protagonista y pues en este momento está teniendo la oportunidad de seguir por el Partido Demócrata tomando eh, las riendas de la ciudad, tomando las riendas nuevamente. En este momento lo recordamos en la salida de la alcaldía, eh, hay una mujer en el cargo, eh, posiblemente, pues de acuerdo a la votación de ustedes, de acuerdo a la votación general, podría llegar nuevamente a la alcaldía de la ciudad de Charlo. Estos son pues nuestros dos participantes que van a estar en los debates de hoy. Lo que decía Maudia es solicitarles a ustedes, se van a hacer algunas preguntas, hay unas preguntas que enviaron por internet, unas preguntas que enviaron a través de Twitter, la intención es que ustedes tengan la oportunidad de preguntarle directamente a él los tópicos que se van a manejar. Son seguridad, son transporte, son inmigración, por supuesto, que es lo que nos concierne. Y lo que tiene que ver también con las propuestas laborales que cada uno de ellos trae. Así que bienvenidos a este debate. Inmigración, para Romano. Ya lo había comentado, inmigración. because it's not written, I don't know. <laughs> but it's all nice things you said about the two of you and your history <laughs> and uh, where you are and what you hope to do and hopefully that we'll be able to ask you the questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis when the time comes, on a town hall meeting basis and uh, welcome, welcome on behalf of the voters of the Latin community. Kishan. Yes, we have right here Mr. Ron Cox. Mr. Ron Cox is going to be reading some of the questions that uh, the public have. And just a few words, Mr. Cox, who you are. <coughs> yeah, my name's Ron Cox. I'm president of Jesus Ministry. I want to welcome all of y'all here today and our candidates. And I uh, look forward to a good debate. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have few, uh, we're going to invite two. <laughs> <laughs> we want to have this debate without you. Y vamos a pedirle entonces que vamos a pedirle a los candidatos que se paren acá y vamos a comenzar nuestro debate en esta noche. We're going to start a debate tonight. Um, a conversation debate. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna ask you to please just uh, go ahead and ask the question. It's gonna be 30 seconds to a minute, 
And then they're going to have one minute to answer. Okay? La pregunta a 30 segundos, a un minuto, y él va a contestar en un minuto. Uh, why don't we, uh, you translate for me, for uh, Mr. Cameron, and I translate for Mr. Pickup. Okay, we have the first question here, and it's for both of you. Okay, what do you see as the three most critical issues facing Charlotte at the present time? I left my coat at home. <laughs> Fashion faux pas. That's okay. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. All right. Sí, de, dejó su coat en la casa y él pide disculpas por eso. Pero tiene corbata, right? <laughs> you have um, So, thank you all very much for allowing us to come and have a dialogue with you. Um, in my four years on city council, I do not remember having a meeting just like this. My opponent and I visited uh, East Charlotte, where there's a large Latino population. And the number one thing I learned when I came away from that evening was that there was not one Latino in the room. And I asked several of the neighborhood leaders why. That concerned me because I know that you're 10% of Charlotte and growing. Um, and so I very much appreciate the, um, the invitation tonight. Dice que él uh, realmente estuvieron en el Eastside y estuvieron allá haciendo, viendo a la gente y hablando con una congregación ahí, con un grupo de gente, pero no vio ni un solo latino. Es la primera vez que él ve esta congregación así de latinos y que él sabe que nosotros somos el 10% en esta ciudad. Buenas noches. <laughs> Let me also thank each and every one of you for being here this evening. I am honored to be a part of, well, you that I consider to be a part of the fabric of this community for a very long time, with even more years to come. Uh, buenas noches. Uh, es un placer para mí estar aquí con ustedes y, y agradecerle a todos y a cada uno de ustedes por que estén por darme esta oportunidad de compartir y también por haber sido parte de la fábrica de, la, de esta comunidad y de esta ciudad durante tanto tiempo. The question has been, what are the three most important issues that faces uh, the community? Uh, and I will tell you that the first one happens to be uh, economic development. We need to find a way to make sure that we are about job creation, business development, and business retention. As a native Charlottean and a long member uh, serving on the city council, you know, I remember after South Mecklenburg, uh, having my, well, right during South Mecklenburg, having my first job as a student bus driver. And having that first taste of an opportunity made me want to have more. But then beyond that, uh, I wanted others to be able to have more. And that's one of the reasons why in which I'm continuing to run this day on the platform of economic development, because it is so important not just for me, but I know it is for you. Over the years, I've had a track record of bringing companies here like Chiquita and Husqvarna and Rooms to Go and um, Gray Bar Electric. Rooms to Go, Chiquita, etc. 
And so it's important from my perspective that the next mayor be able to bring to the city of Charlotte a balanced level of job opportunities. Everything from white collar, but more importantly, to blue collar. Eso me parece que es muy importante para que el, que el próximo alcalde de la ciudad de Charlotte pueda traer un balance de trabajo, no solamente trabajo laboral, sino trabajo también de oficina, todo tipo de trabajo para todo tipo de personas. And so, with an unemployment, with unemployment being at around oh, 84,000 people in the Charlotte area, economic development is priority number one. Y yo por el desempleo estando en un nivel de 84,000 personas en el área de Charlotte, Ensure, secondly, ensuring that uh, your public safety needs are met. Uh, as chairman of community safety, we have fought very hard to make sure that we uh, lower the crime rate. And so public safety issues in and around our faith community, as well as our area of businesses and neighborhoods, is going to be key. And although we've hit historic lows in crime, we still have a lot more to do. Neighborhood watch means nothing if nobody's watching. Therefore, we need to have you engaged as a community with our police department. No funciona si nadie vigila. Entonces tenemos que tener cada una de las personas en las áreas trabajando con el departamento de la policía. Lastly, making sure that the least of those have an opportunity to have housing is important relative to our veterans, our seniors, and the least of those who can afford housing, as well as our homeless. Y por último, el área de vivienda es muy importante para nosotros. Es importante tener, saber que podemos traer vivienda a los veteranos as mayor, I will work hard to make sure that I try to create housing across the board throughout the city for the least of, for the least of those who need it. Thank you. is that they were going to have an introduction, right? And, uh, and we didn't do that. So thank you so much, Patrick, for doing that. And you're going to have the chance to, to answer the question and continue. Okay. Thank you. So the, the, the three top issues that are facing Charlotte, that are facing Charlotte now that I intend to address as mayor. Las tres cosas, I, I have a Number one, building building a strong economy. Número uno, hacer una 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 economía fuerte. That's diverse. That's diverse. Diverse in, diverse in industries. Diversidad en la industria. And reflects its population. Y reflexión en la población. Number two, education. Número dos, educación. I believe schools belong to everyone. Yo creo que las escuelas le pertenecen a todo el mundo. Strong neighborhoods have strong schools. Vecindarios bien fuertes y también sus escuelas. Strong neighborhoods make up a strong city. También los vecindarios fuertes hacen una ciudad más fuerte. Your next mayor must be a dynamic partner in education. Su próximo alcalde tiene que ser una persona dinámica en la educación. Number three, transportation. Número tres, transportación. We need more options. Creo que necesitamos más opciones. For the citizens of Charlotte. Para los ciudadanos de Charlotte. To use both the roads. Para que puedan usar las carreteras. The trains, the buses, and by foot, pedestrian. And we must reduce. We must focus on reducing congestion, traffic congestion. Okay.
this question. The second question, can you give us your views on immigration reform, even though it is a federal issue? And second, how do you stand on driver's license for the undocumented residents? Uh, to elaborate just a little bit more, HB 786 passed through the House and through the Senate this year in our, in our North Carolina State Congressional. Um, it was moved on to a study bill with the promise of it coming up again in the spring. So I want to hear both of your thoughts on, on the immigration reform and on the potential driver's license. And remember, for, for the sake of time, try to do it in one minute, okay? I know it's hard. But go ahead. Even though immigration reform is something that, as has been stated, is something that happens on the federal uh, and state levels. The next mayor of the city of Charlotte needs to make sure that he's not shy about supporting you on those issues. As someone whose father was murdered when I was seven years old, I know what it's like firsthand to be detached from someone who you would want to be part of your life. That being said, the way that the immigration laws are being looked at today, is doing the one very thing that I would hope would never happen which happened in my case, and that is to separate families from one another. And so if elected mayor, I am happy to use my office as one to be able to support you relative to the issue around immigration. Regarding you having a driver's license or a photo ID of some sort, it is important from my perspective to make sure that that is an opportunity that will be afforded to you. It's happened in 10 other states around the country. I don't know what's wrong with it not being able to happen right here in North Carolina. I'm disappointed that my party is not leading more on this important national and state issue. I hope that leaders like Marco Rubio will help to influence the House of Representatives to focus on the problem of helping 12 million undocumented workers. A driver's license. It's a very important public safety issue. We can't have citizens living in the shadows here in Charlotte. As mayor, I will work with our state delegation to find a responsible solution para encontrar una solución responsable to help those who want to be recognized in this community to be recognized.
my conversation earlier with a, with a woman in the room of this great city. We must adopt an attitude that we are all in this together. We can no longer pit one part of Charlotte against the other. The partisanship and bickering. Must, must stop. When we put partisan politics over problem solving and collaboration, we are not moving Charlotte forward. We are moving backwards. We must streamline city and county departments to find efficiencies, create savings, rather than raising taxes, Citizens want a government that's more accountable and transparent. Los ciudadanos quieren un gobierno que sea más transparente y que esté abierto a saber qué hacen. And they have the right to have a dis they have a right to have a say. Y ellos tienen el derecho de tener una voz about important transit projects acerca de los proyectos de tránsito that are very expensive. Que son muy caros. That threaten to jeopardize the success of our entire system. Citizens want a transparent government where their voice will be heard on important decisions like what occurred with the Carolina Panthers. I believe Charlotte is the greatest place to live, work, and raise a family. I believe it can be even better with the right leadership. I ask for your vote and your support. Le Thank you very much. Voto y por su apoyo. Gracias. You shall know a tree by the fruit in which it bears. As one who has gotten his uh, ministers and trainings license, I understand and I believe wholeheartedly that the least of those should always be first and foremost on our radar screen. Why should you vote for me as mayor? In addition to being the most experienced candidate with inclusion at the top of my mind, Latinos should vote for me because I am invested in your success and the future of Charlotte. My record certainly demonstrates that by way of bringing about a business inclusion program which allows you as women and minorities to participate in. By way of having the gang of one to come into fruition under my leadership, 
Giving our youth other alternative means of being able to get out of a gang rather than to stay in one. A vote for me means that you're voting for a mayor who can deliver on the issues. One who listens to all sides. One who advocates for change. One who has built and will build consensus. Make tough decisions. Exercise fiscal prudence. And invest in all of our future. The idea is to have a mayor that is a mayor that has a vision domestically and globally. We together will have an opportunity to share a vision for the city of Charlotte. That allows us to maintain our quality of life and to plan and invest in our future so that our families can prosper together. I'm Patrick Cannon, and I ask for your vote. Por favor. Gracias. <laughs>